This is where some of Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And as chairman of the Brexit party, uh, formerly led by GB News's own Nigel Farage, Richard Tice got a front seat uh, to a pivotal moment in UK politics as voters shunned the Conservatives and Labour to back them in the 2019 European elections. Now, with Richard at the helm as the new leader, the party repackaged as Reform UK, last weekend experienced another rise in the latest YouGov polling, gaining two points as the Tories dropped five to fall behind Labour and to their lowest level since September 2019. After being ignored by the media, all of a sudden, people are realising they can't cancel populist parties. And there have been calls now by Conservative commentators for reform to merge with the UK's other right-wing parties in order to become a viable alternative for Tory voters disillusioned with the party, just as they did three years ago. And Richard Tice is here with me now. Richard, it's been fascinating to see the media this week because they never wanted to speak about reform. No, they UK didn't. I mean, again. The they thought you were ancient history. They did. They've, they've tried, but you know, they tried to cancel us. But actually, we have, as you say, we've been uncancelled, <laughs> yes. and not before time because, by the polls. Yeah, by the polls, and because actually, what's happened is people have suddenly realised that they're no longer the Conservatives. I've been calling them for six months the Con Socialists. They are the party of high tax high regulation, meaning low growth and lower wages. So in a sense, they're just like the Labour Party. So they're both socialists, and that actually is not what people who voted Conservative at the last election, including many Red Wall voters who had never previously voted Conservative, so they're looking elsewhere and they say, who's going to stand up for decent, ordinary British workers? And you saw last week the biggest tax rise we've seen in this country for some 60 years. And people realise you cannot trust a single word, not a single word this government says, vaccine passports, in, out, shake it all about. Uh, you know, we don't know where we are with them. Taxes, they said they wouldn't increase them, and now they've increased them. Children, they said they wouldn't jab them, now they're jabbing them. They've ignored the advice. So you can't trust a word they said. So people are saying, who else is out there? And people have come across and you know, said, actually, there's reform. We stand for cutting taxes, smart regulation, high growth. Uh, we get, we've got a conference at the end of this month. We thought we'd make it easy, um, so having it on the same day in the same city as the Tory conference. So it'd be nice and easy for people just to walk across the street. <laughs> if they're disillusioned uh, with what they see exactly, maybe, on the other know, side. Maybe one or two MPs may be disillusioned. Maybe they'll pop across the street. Well, do you need that? I was going to say, do you need that? Do you need a high-profile defection to actually have a presence no, at Westminster? Uh, uh, all, all comers welcome. It would be, of course, it would be great. I mean, it would be... Uh, and is there a chance helpful. of that? Are you speaking well, to anyone? I mean, obviously, I couldn't reveal negotiations on the, on the uh, live on air... But, but are there Tory MPs, no, there are without naming any names? There are some very disgruntled Tory MPs... And have they approached you? ...who realise that uh, this is no longer the party that they thought mm -hmm. it was. Uh, and they can't trust what their leaders say. They don't, they don't recognise the Prime Minister from the person who was elected in December 19. And they're very, very concerned. And they're working out what can they do about mm. it. And I think, you know, democracy is best served when there's more choice. You get more debate, more discussion, and then voters have a... Uh, essentially, they've got more choice. So we've got, as we speak, I've got about 280 candidates for the general election. We'll, have six, we'll be standing, give or take, 600. Uh, and there'll be five parties that are standing that sort of number of candidates, and we'll be one of them. It's going to be difficult, though, for you to get a Tory MP, isn't it? I mean, here they were, breaking one of their fundamental manifesto promises over tax rises. And actually... The polls, and I know they're all over the place, and I don't particularly trust the polls, but if you look at the trend in the polls, this idea that this was somehow going to be accepted by voters, I think that's out the window. It's becoming more unpopular by the day. And remember, people aren't even paying these taxes yet. Yeah. Only five Tory MPs rebelled. It was, it was I mean, a tiny, yeah. pathetically it, small rebellion. It was pathetic. It really was. You had some MPs sort of who actually voted for it and then wrote in the newspapers massively against it to make themselves feel better. You know, but that's what people have come to expect from what I call them now the con-socialists. You can't trust them. And that's why people have had enough. The tragedy is when people say that they'll never vote again, they're done with politics. That is a tragedy. I want to give hope, I want to give positivity. Um, for example, no one on the health service, you know, we're pouring these billions of pounds. No one's talking about reforming it. No one's being bold and ambitious and saying, do you know what, I'm going to go for zero waiting lists and we're going to come up with a plan to get there. Zero waiting lists. Why do we have waiting lists? Mm. Most other Western nations don't have waiting lists. We need to be bold. We need to have, be ambitious. I want the best free at the point of delivery healthcare service. 
that where you have zero waiting lists. I don't want to wait a hip. I don't want to wait a year for a hip replacement. I want it done in a fortnight. Isn't one of the big problems you've got, Richard, that Brexit party? It had instant name recognition. Obviously, you had Farage, but you had lots of other high-profile faces as well. And a lot of people simply don't know what Reform UK is yeah, yet. Do you have the money? Do you have the marketing power behind you to change that? Look, anybody watching who feels that they want to donate, fantastic. You know, you, political parties always need more money. So you don't have the money at the moment? No, the, the reality is that, um, you know, you, it's a new brand. You're building a new brand. And that's always difficult in any walk of life. It takes time, of course, particularly in politics, particularly in a pandemic. And, and it's interesting, I think the, name, the, the, the recognition of the crossover between the Brexit Party and reform is actually lower than we thought. But in a sense, actually, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe people feel, look, Brexit's done. We've, you Do you know, think it was a mistake to change the name? No, not I mean, at all, no, because, because it does what it says on the tin and it's looking forward and it's bold and we need reforms. There's so much that needs reforming, whether it's the House of Lords, the BBC, the health service, the way the police operate. The, the, you know, this country is a great nation that's being badly run Badly managed, badly led. We can do so much mm. better. We've got to lift our eyes, but it needs reform. We need competent, proper leadership. I keep using the word, we're being badly led at the moment and badly let down. What about this idea that a lot of Conservative commentators are pushing for of some sort of merger between all the minor parties? I mean, you've got Reclaim, you've got the SDP, whether their politics fit exactly with yours, I'm, I'm not certain. But, but is that something you've discussed? I know you did a deal... In the London uh, yeah, in, mayoral in, race, in the mayoral Lawrence elections, Fox, for uh, I endorsed Lawrence, and he endorsed our candidates for the assembly elections. We get on very well. Lawrence is brilliant uh, at the things that he's really passionate about. Because it's confusing, isn't it, having a party called Reform and a party called Reclaim? Well, I, th look, I, th I think we're all trying to build brands. We've got give or take. I think the, the election will be in the summer of '23. And so we've got about 20 months, and we're full steam ahead. And we want as many people to say, look, actually, you know, I mean, once we've made good progress building the brand. We've got more work to do. But, uh, you know, we say, want to say to people, come with us. Come on the journey and, you know, join us, stand with us, high-profile people, great people. Mm. And, and we've got to go for it. I think we can make a real difference. Of course, first past the post is not easy. Well, I was going to say, because what about traditional Tory voters who probably love a lot of what you're saying... But say the reality is, Richard, if I've a got vote a, I've for got a, Reform UK is I've, going to get Keir Starmer as I've Prime got a Minister. Very simple f phrase, which is vote for what you believe in, not what you're afraid of. Be principled, stick to those principles. And if you believe in our agenda, and we'll be putting forward more plans over the coming weeks, then, you know, uh, vote for us. Can be you win bold. a seat? Yeah, of course we can. I mean, multiple know, I, seats? Yeah. I mean, I'm ambitious, I'm bold. I'm saying, yeah, we can make a real difference. We've got to shape, we've got to influence. I want people to believe in us. Well, look, I'm going to bring the superstar panel in now to continue this discussion. Uh, tonight, it is the former editor of the Daily Star, Dawn Neeson, the conservative commentator, Calvin Robinson, and the GB News presenter, Becca Hudson. Becca, let, let me come to you first. Do you think, uh, I, I, I know you, you don't share the politics, but do you think it's important that the government are challenged from the right as well as the left? has led to the government um, over, the, over the pandemic and I think that probably explains partly why we're in such a huge mess and I think we absolutely do need to witness <coughs> government leadership. I mean Richard says you know, we are being bad, this is a great country that's being badly led and clearly we do need um, far more scrutiny of, of what's happening. I wonder Richard, what's the plan for appealing um, to some of those kind of more vulnerable communities who might feel slightly kind of alienated by uh, the alliances that you've um, formed with say Lawrence Fox, you know how are you going to reach out to the kind of minority communities protected identities, people like that? But I think, I mean, I stood at uh, the last general election in Hartlepool, um, and I think the, the key thing that we're focusing on is we want to cut taxes for the lowest paid, the least well-off. I want to take six million of the lowest paid out of paying any income tax at all. That is bold, that is completely different, and I think that would help, uh, you know, the least well-off uh, in some of the most disadvantaged communities across the country. I think they would find that really appealing and slightly surprising, mm. perhaps, from someone like reform. Mm. And what's your sort of um, take on sort of, you know, social, social issues, social, uh, gender identity politics, trans rights, critical race theory? What's, where do you kind of stand on those sort of more Look, cultural issues? I think issues? we respect them, but the reality is it's not what people are talking about in the pubs, in Hartlepool, in Harlem, in Grimsby, you know, in, in all up and down the country. It's just not what people are talking about. I know it's very trendy. 
you know, in central London, but it's not what people are talking about in 99% of the country. Mm. And then how would you take the criticism that this will then kind of make our country veer even more to the right than it arguably already is? Uh, I think as people see our policies, I think they might be quite surprised. It's not about right or, or left. So you were centrist? It's about, it's about common sense solutions to the great problems that this country's got. So and you're centrist, centrist, I think, centrist I think, I think, party? We're, we're common sense. <laughs> common sense party, and this country needs some common sense leadership. Dawn Neeson? <laughs> I think that there is this now link constantly. Whenever you say right wing, people interpret it as racist. What would you do to get rid of that opinion? I think just, I'll come back to this point about common sense solutions to the challenges we face. And look, you always but what these, about immigration, for example? Because obviously these... it was a big issue for Nigel. Is that something that you're going yeah, look, to continue? I, I, I think it's a big issue for, for, for most people, actually, in the country. People want, you know, we are a welcoming, hospitable nation. And I think, but, but people want things to be done lawfully, properly. So let's welcome smart, lawful immigration. But actually, mm. we don't want, you know, illegal immigration... Uh, that, that I think you know causes real challenges, real pressures on communities. And people will say, look, you know, abide by the law, do things properly, do things by the rules. But will you have the same sort of rhetoric over migrants? Will you be there yeah, and we're, we're, we're very in the clear. channel? I've, I've always been very clear. We need to be zero. You know, we have zero tolerance of illegal immigration across the channel. I've been saying for months that the only way to deal with this is actually we've got to say that we've got to stop the boats coming. Uh, on our shores. We've got to return them to France. And finally, Priti Patel has actually worked it out. You know, and she's looked at the same rule book and the same laws that I looked at. Calvin Robinson? I thought Becca and I were going to agree when she started talking about addressing these minority communities. I thought she meant Hartlepool and County Durham, but she meant the protected characteristics like trans, which nobody cares about. Um, I think probably trans people do, don't they? A very small minority <laughs> care about these trans activist issues. Um, anyway, Richard, you know where I fall on this. I think it needs to happen. Yourself, um, Reform, Reclaim, SDP, Heritage, all these parties need to hold the government to account and form some kind of opposition. I think it's fantastic. But Boris Johnson suggested that he's possibly going to argue or fight the next election around Brexit somehow. Who knows? Do you think this is going to still be the issue around the time of the next election or what will be? No, I think, I think the key thing around the next election actually will be the massive waiting list. We're, the, pouring money, taxpayers' money, into the NHS, and there's no reform, there'll be no change, the waiting list will be just the same or higher. So what's your plan? You that's, say, that's, you that's, say that's, zero waiting that's, that's, how will you get there? Uh, we're going to release that later on. We're not we're at our party conference. So um, we'll give you some details on that then. So I think you know, waiting list is a big thing. Um, taxation is a massive thing. You know, it's, it's, it's money in people's pocket. We're the only party that's going to stand for cutting taxes, and we will come up with a smart green agenda, not the Tories... It's not, the Tories' agenda is not net zero, it's net stupid. It really is stupid, and people know that, and they want a party that's prepared to stand up and come up with a sensible green plan that reduces emissions, but doesn't send hundreds of thousands of decent British jobs to China, lots of people's money to China... You know, that is a smart yeah. plan, and we'll be releasing more details on that. But, Richard, when it comes to the NHS, I, I completely agree we need to have a real conversation, the type of conversation that most politicians in, in Britain are afraid of. So you're talking about reforming the NHS to, to, to get to zero taxes, uh, to, to get to zero weightiness, and I know you'll obviously release your, your, your plan at, at your conference. But, for example, are you going to be prepared to have the tough conversations like, actually, maybe... It can't all be free at the point of no. use. Maybe no, no, rich no. people let's, will have to start. No, let, let's be very clear. The NHS, the NHS is is always, and it's uh, it will always be, and must always be free at the point of delivery. But we need. Look, it's the most loved healthcare system in the world, but no one's saying it's the most efficient or the best managed. So that's the tough conversation we've got to have with people. So we've got to say it's badly managed, it's inefficient, it's wasteful, and it can be done so much better. OK, but you're not talking about uh, rich people having to pay to see the GP, for example, which no, is what I mean, other countries no, because, have done no, no, because in order to save it is, it is a fundamental tenet of, of, of us, of, of Britain, the NHS. It, it's, a, it's like a religion, really. Um, and the absolute... But basis. isn't that the problem? No, I think, actually, if it's properly managed and properly led, then it becomes a much greater sort of source of pride. At the moment, there's real angst. So free at the point of delivery, but properly organised, properly managed. And what you've got to do is you've got to put the power in the hands of the patient, not the monopoly provider. Uh, just finally, what's your internal polling 
showing you? Uh, do, do, uh, do you I think, think the, that 5% the, uh, the, the, uh, you think it's, was it's right? It's at least 5%. It's at least 5%. From people I've been talking to in the polling industry... So, now that polls come up and down, as we know, and they can be, you know, right or not, we've just got to keep working hard, pushing the message out. Uh, we've got the, uh, the conference uh, on the 3rd of October, and we've got, you know, great attendance of that. And I think, you know, as people realise that we're really serious, we're going to stand in every seat. We're not standing down for anybody this time. And big-name candidates flat again? Last time. Say again? Big-name candidates again? Hopefully, yeah. You know, anybody out there? Uh, big names... Uh, just, you know, hard-working entrepreneurs, anybody, put your name forward. Don't hold back. Don't miss out. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.